great party. Life changing even. <laughs> I think I missed some stuff. The Animax series finale has arrived and did it give us everything we wanted? Well, let's chat and find out just what happened. <laughs> What's going on you lovely people? Lisa here and I am trying to keep myself put together because this might be a bit of an emotional video. Like, this series finale of Andy Mac just aired and I won't lie to you, it had my eyes welling up with a few tears multiple times and it takes a lot for me to be emotional. But this show holds a very special place in my heart and I think that's why it kind of got to me but I will ramble more about that later in this video. First, you probably actually want to know how on earth Terry Minsky and Disney Channel decided to end this groundbreaking series. Well, they gave us some of what we wanted, maybe didn't go as far as some of you wanted, but as a fan of the show, I was pretty satisfied, which is not always the case when it comes to series finales of shows. I mean, we've been let down quite a few times. I mean, most recently, I think Game of Thrones fans are pretty torn about that series finale. But alas, if you want the shorthand version of what happened, how it ended, you guys, it's gonna be a spoiler alert, obviously. Hopefully you knew that if you clicked this video. If you haven't watched the finale and you don't wanna know anything about it, just get off this video, but please come back after you watch it. In short, we have Muffy and Tyrus actually happening and Andy gets into art school. So the good hair crew will actually be torn apart for the first time since second grade, but this is a big um, kind of like coming of age thing into adulthood and by adulthood I mean your teenage years as you grow into your own person and finding out who you are individually so we'll have to use our imagination to kind of figure out how their journey might continue but now let's actually go through this episode and talk about it a little more in depth Jack, baby, I was born this way. So the episode revolves around a house party because Cece is going out of town and, well, you know, Beck, she's actually still the cool mother and what happens when your mom goes out of town? You throw a party, but Bex is throwing the party with Andy because, like I said, she's the cool mom. Uh, it could be a little awkward depending on how you look at it, but it seems like it'd be a fun time. But don't worry, Cece actually knows about the party. You know we're gonna have a party. I know, but isn't it more fun if you think you're defying me? I just love the evolution of Cece. Like, all of these characters have pretty much grown throughout these three seasons. But look at Cece, man. She has loosened up so much, and now she is like the grandma you actually would want to hang out with. Anyway, when it comes to art school, Bex and Bowie have intercepted a letter from Shadyside Academy of Visual Arts, Sava, and are worried about if it's an acceptance letter or a rejection letter and how Andy may react to it. They don't want to ruin her mood for the party, so they decide to give Andy the letter afterwards. Then comes the first real big emotional moment, at least for me, of the episode. As Bex and Andy are setting up for the party, the doorbell rings and standing there looking dapper as ever is Bowie in his dad's tux. Yes, you guys. He didn't get to wear the tux to the actual wedding, but here he is wearing it now. And it turns out Bex is wearing the dress that she would have worn at the wedding. Um, and yes, they're they're dressed like they would be, and they're having their first dance, and it's it's just really beautiful. No, I've never seen nothing like you. No. Then the party really starts as we see Buffy and Cyrus looking longingly across the room at Marty and then TJ kind of discussing how those relationships are going or rather not going so well. Then enter the party pooper known as Kira because I'm over here like who invited her? She's like draped all over TJ. It's not cool. I mean, at least for us as viewers who want something else to happen. As TJ and Kira are watching Cyrus dance on the dance floor and be, well, Cyrus, you know, he's one of a kind, and they both start to laugh. But as TJ tells Kira, there's a difference in their laughs. I saw the way you were smiling. You thought it was funny. I thought it was fun. You know there's a difference, right? That's right, guys. TJ Kippen is now really aware of everything, and he explains that he was laughing with Cyrus, as in, oh, Cyrus so so goofy, typical Cyrus, it's adorable, it's cute. Meanwhile, Kira was laughing at Cyrus, making fun of him, and it's not cool. And it is finally the last straw for TJ, as he now really does confirm that Kira is not a nice person. And, you know, Kira tries to keep him, though, in her clutches by telling TJ she has to pick between her and Cyrus. Why do you do that? Make me pick. Cyrus never made me pick. Because that answers my question. And just like that, bye bye, 
Kira. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna actually miss Kira. But you know what? I gotta give props to Raquel who plays Kira because she did a great job. But Kira as the character, not gonna miss her at all. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. But you know what? Then the tense mood of this part of the episode is immediately lightened by none other than a dancing T-Rex who enters the party and ends up being quite the fun surprise. I said no parties. Just kidding! I forgot how much I wanted to go to one of your parties. See you guys, like I said, Cece is the cool grandma now. Next up is one of my all-time favorite Disney Channel moments, and I haven't been watching Disney Channel for a long time since I was actually a kid, so this is kind of a big thing for me to say that this next moment is a big moment, and it is a musical moment, and if you're a Disney fan, you know Disney takes their musical moments very seriously, whether it's an actual, you know, movie musical or a musical episode or just a musical number in a show, and there are a lot of them and they force them on us even if the cast can't sing or play instruments. But this moment in this episode, like as soon as it started, I just started clapping and I immediately was like, this is an iconic Andy Mack moment. So what am I rambling about? Well, TJ ends up hopping on the keyboard because TJ Kiffin is just full of secrets, guys. And then our main cast and some of the B cast, including, you know, Amber, uh, start singing the song Born This Way by Lady Gaga and it's just like yes Disney Channel just did that like I don't know if there's a better anthem for this show in that moment In the religion of the insecure I must be myself respect my youth I mean, you guys, I just, I love that song. I love the meaning of that song and the fact that they picked it for this moment, this show, and this finale, it just felt like it was perfect, especially with what this show means, all the issues this show has tackled. I, yeah, I just think it's so beautiful. But now we got to keep moving on to the rest of our pairings. We talked about Bex and Bowie a little bit. Now we have Andy and Jonah, who I know aren't actually a couple, but the thing is, you never know what the future holds, right? Wait, so in the teaser for this finale, we saw Jonah actually, you know, want to give Andy something, and it was all like, oh, what's he going to give her? What's he going to ask her? Well, it turns out Jonah found that bracelet Andy made for him and gave him way back in the day that they thought was lost, so he's giving it back to her. And he's like, what are you gonna do with it? And Andy basically says she's gonna just like bury it or something so that none of them ever have to see it again. But it turns out Jonah actually asks to keep that bracelet because he actually really likes it. And it's, it's kind of like, oh, huh, look at that. Maybe Jonah's actually finally wisening up in the last like couple minutes of this show. But then when it comes to pondering the future, we have Andy asking this question. I wonder what would have happened if we met when we were older. Someday we will be. Well, like I said, that pretty much leaves that kind of open-ended as our minds now flash forward to maybe 20-something year old Andy, maybe having lost touch with Jonah as, you know, sometimes that happens when kids grow up, go to different schools, go to different colleges, and maybe now we have Jonah being a rock star and she runs into a, maybe a music festival and maybe they reconnect because now they're more mature. Maybe we'll get that in another 15 years. Who knows? But they're leaving that open-ended to put, plant that seed that maybe when Jonah is a little bit more mature and Andy as well, that they could actually be meant for each other. And then it's kind of like that sweet childhood crush, first boyfriend, first girlfriend reconnecting story that we all love in a rom-com, right? But now let's move on to Marty and Buffy. So Buffy's kind of still hanging on those words that Marty said before that he likes her as a friend, but she's very conflicted because she knows her feelings have changed. So does she risk messing up their friendship? Well, she actually goes and pays a compliment to Marty with no strings attached and wants to have a straightforward conversation, not with their usual competitive poking at each other banter. And well, it actually doesn't go too well. How was your day? Fine. How was yours? Fine. Now what? Never mind. It was a stupid idea. So now Buffy's kind of embarrassed and she just runs outside and I was like, that boy, I know he's a good boy. He better run after her. And thankfully, Marty from the party goes after Buffy. And then they try this whole conversation thing again and well, Buffy finally says she likes him. I like you. Like the way you used to like me, but don't anymore. 
And well, yes, guys, Buffy and Marty met at a party, and flash forward to now, and Buffy and Marty become an item at a party. So it's kind of a sweet full circle moment. Now, for what I'm sure you all really wanted to talk about in this episode, what you probably wanted me to talk about in this video, you probably didn't want me to talk about anything else, but I had to. But now we're finally to the Tyrus part. What happens with TJ and Cyrus now that Kira is out of the picture? Well, essentially, what we've been waiting for happens, and it's freaking adorable. Honestly, I think it's beautiful. So we have Cyrus joining TJ by the fire and, and you know, asking what happened to Kira and TJ pretty much says she's not a nice person. And Cyrus kind of brings it back around so that we can remember that TJ actually wasn't a nice person in the beginning and he's like, well, TJ, you know, people used to say that about you. Well, sometimes there's a nice person on the inside trying to get out. And then Cyrus brings up how there's a lot of things he actually still doesn't know about TJ, like how TJ plays piano. That was a nice little surprise. And Cyrus is really showing interest in wanting to know things about TJ. And well, when TJ is like, what do you want to know? Cyrus asks, what maybe some of us have been wanting to know for a while, what the heck TJ stands for? Seriously, like one of the most important questions. I'm sure you all probably wanted to know, you know, wanted him to ask, you know, do you like me first? But instead he asks what TJ stands for. And well, it turns out there's only five people in TJ's family that know what TJ stands for. And well, that means TJ telling Cyrus his real name is a pretty big deal. And that just kind of makes the Tyrus tingles go even more. TJ stands for Thelonious Jagger. Are you kidding? That is a great name. Okay, so yeah, like I said, the fact that TJ tells Cyrus his real name is a huge step for that friendship and maybe something more. But the fact that Cyrus actually also says that he loves the name and it's like serious that he loves the name. It's just like hearts are melting all over the place or crying or or whatever as we're watching this. And we're not even in the good part yet because now they just sit on this bench staring at each other and you can feel that tension. And TJ asks if there's anything else Cyrus wants to know. But he's not just asking a question. As he's doing this, you see his hand start inching towards Cyrus's. And then Cyrus asks TJ if there's anything he wants to tell him. And TJ asks the same question. And it's kind of like, oh, are they going to say the words? But instead, it's kind of like this. And it's still an aww moment. <sighs> yeah, you guys, that handhold is not a pancake handhold, not like this. It's an interlocking waffle handhold. I stole those uh, descriptions from an episode of Cloak and Dagger. I think Olivia Holt says that. I'm sure people actually say that in real life, but I just thought it was cute and I had never heard it before. But you guys, seriously, interlocking handhold, that's the sign of more than friends handhold, right? So while Disney Channel did kind of play it safe uh, with not showing a kiss between these two or not hearing the words, are you, you know, into me? Are you gay? Any of that. The handhold essentially confirms Tyrus's canon, right? Like, they're a thing and we can kind of rest easy and exhale while, like we saw TJ do here and Cyrus do when he came out and told Andy and all of that. It's just a lot of exhaling, I feel like, you know? It reminds me of that speech, what is it, from Love, Simon, uh, right? When Jennifer Garner's character the mom tells, you know, Simon he can he can breathe now, he can exhale. It's kind of like that moment. It's like, ugh, everything that's been building up for this whole show with these two characters, it happened. But after that big moment, it's like, how do you close the show? Well, now we see our good hair crew and the parents sitting by the fire looking at old pictures and there's one of little Cyrus, Andy, and Buffy in front of Andy Shack, just kind of showing how badly sometimes shows have to Photoshop things to make us believe that these kids were little kids when they grew up together. But they're hanging out in front of Andy Shack, looking at this photo of the first time they kind of really became friends with each other. They've been friends since second grade. So when Cyrus is kind of like, oh, well, we'll always be together, Buffy chimes in and agrees, and then it's kind of silent on Andy's part, and they're like, Andy, you gotta say it too. And now, you know, Cyrus is kind of worried when she's silent. And then Andy gets up and shows them Andy Shack, which is completely empty. Now, of course, you guys in the comments on my recap of the previous episode 
are a lot more optimistic than I was because I was like taking the downer route. I was like, maybe Andy's clearing it out because she's sad. She doesn't get into art class and she doesn't want to do art anymore. But you know what? I got to learn to be more positive, guys, like you all who watch these and comment on my videos because you all were like, no, Lisa, you're wrong. Why are you such a Debbie Downer? She's totally clearing it out because she's moving to art school. Well, I mean, you're partly right. She's clearing it out because she got into art school and it turns out she's going to need an actual studio. And so she's decided to put her crafting stuff away and turn Andy Shack into whatever kind of studio she needs. So now she's kind of just like telling them that she is waiting to get the acceptance letter because the phone call during the wedding was about getting in and now they're supposed to send her that acceptance letter and she's super excited and wants to frame that letter and you just see Bex and Bowie kind of staring at each other like oh crap because well they hid that letter for now and when Andy does get the letter it's gonna be pretty crumpled up but now the show is wrapping up and of course it would not be a series finale without an emotional montage and we get one of all the important moments that happened at Andy Shack throughout the series and then we have our good hair crew telling each other that they'll be in each other's lives no matter what happens. And then they start to kind of predict where they see themselves in the future. And then Andy asks Jonah to take a picture of Buffy, Cyrus, and her in the same position as the old photo. Kind of recreate it, the then and now. But did anybody else feel like Jonah kind of looked like he felt sad that he was asked to take the photo and not actually be in the photo? Anybody else pick up on that? I don't know. He's still part of the crew, though. Um, but yeah, then we have Cyrus ending this emotional moment with some wise words from none other than Winnie the Pooh. And may I remind you all, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And now we're at the end of the episode, the end of the series. It's as it closes out with Andy hanging the two photos up on her wall, and now a montage of photos from production throughout the years of the cast, the cast and the crew, then and now, and it just, it makes you realize how much these kids have grown in the matter of three seasons. They were what, 11, 12, and 13 or so when the show started? Now they're what, like 15, 16, 17? They're, they're becoming adults, and it's just crazy to see transformations, and it's just like, hit you in the gut multiple times with montages and whatever uh, to make it even more emotional. But yes, you guys, that that's the end of Andy Mac. That's the series finale. Essentially, every main character pretty much got their happy ending within the confines of the show as we know it. Obviously, you can't make a definitive one because they're teenagers. We're, there's so much life to live. You can't make them get married or be, you know, completely endgame right now. We just kind of have to leave it open-ended and fill our, our minds with what we think will happen. But essentially, here's what we got. We got Bex and Bowie happily married. Cece seems pretty happy. Andy's going to art school. Buffy's learned that she's, you know, good at coaching as well as a team player. She's had that kind of like, you know, arc of being um, uh, less selfish. She's also now dating Marty. We have Cyrus who is now happy, it seems like, with TJ. And now the only character who I feel like didn't get a lot to do in this episode or a lot of evolution, maybe, was Jonah, although I guess he did show some actual emotions in that last little bit when he said bye to Andy. Love you, Andy, man. So yeah, he kind of didn't get a lot to do. Maybe not a satisfying ending for this series, but then again, it's kind of like, what would you have done with him? What could they have done? Because it seems like after the panic attack storyline, that was his main big thing on the show that they just decided to like, kind of not do a lot with him except make him girl crazy. Like, Again, right um, so I didn't don't really know what they would have done with him it also would have been nice to maybe see another scene with Amber she obviously was in the singing scene she was dancing on the dance floor with Andy but maybe to have her kind of I don't know do something with them I feel like it would have been nice but you know you only got like a half hour for the show it's a series finale you got to cram a lot of things in there so of course some characters are not gonna get the send off you wish they would now when it comes to Cyrus and TJ shippers out there Tyra shippers you probably were maybe a little mad that there wasn't more TJ and Cyrus, or maybe it wasn't more to the TJ and Cyrus scene. Because, well, we got a Buffy and a Marty kiss, but I know many of fans, you know, you, you, you wanted TJ and Cyrus to kiss. But in the grand scheme of things, sadly, that's something that's still a sensitive subject when it comes to kids' television. As much as the world probably, a lot of you wish it wasn't, unfortunately, it still is. There's so many things that I, I don't know, rules that have to change and all of that. So that would definitely be pushing the 
boundaries and it seemed like this was one they didn't want to push. They've already been pushing boundaries, but I still think that they actually did handle this scene well. It was beautiful and while it would have been nice to hear certain actual words coming out of the boys' mouths, the physicality of their characters, their actions, what happened, it did make the scene kind of, to me at least, feel pretty powerful. Sometimes you don't need words, right? Even though you kind of wish you had heard the words. But yeah, for me, I thought it was beautiful and I understand why they didn't push it further than they did. But yeah, that's it guys. That's all for Andy Mack and it's still kind of hard to believe. I honestly, I remember when I met the cast for the first time at the press day for season one, they were so little, and now here they are teenagers going on to bigger and better things. I mean, we will get to see Sophia Wiley in the High School Musical series that's going to be on Disney+, Plus, and Asher Angel's out there making music, and we'll probably be working on a Shazam sequel. We got Peyton Elizabeth Lee, who just finished filming a movie for Disney+, Plus. Emily Skinner's making a bunch of projects with Bratt. Luke Mullen out there saving the world while Joshua Rush is pretty much probably going to be taking over Washington DC in the future, right? So yeah, these kids all got bright futures ahead of them. I'm excited to see what is next for them because honestly, they're some of the nicest and most humble kids that have come out of Disney Channel that I've met and I know they'll go on to do great things. But now it's time for me to kind of give a thank you to the show. I know some of you may be like, why on earth are you talking about this kid's show? You're old. It, you normally talk about freeform shows or I talk about shows like This Is Us and all that kind of stuff, but there's a reason. I mean, one is that as a journalist, or if I call myself that, I cover these Disney shows and so I try to keep up with some of them so that I don't ask the same generic questions every other outlet does, like tell me about your character, what's it like doing this? I like to, like, if I'm invested in a show, I like to ask a little bit more in-depth questions so you actually get answers. Um, so that's why I did keep up with this one, especially because it's a serial show, um, which is something Disney hadn't done before, where, you know, you have these ongoing storylines, whereas most Disney shows are just singular episodes, or may have tiny things that run through, but they're not, like, as big as the storylines that have happened in Andy Mac over the course of th three years, you know? But another reason I really wanted to watch this show and was invested in it from, you know, the the journalist standpoint and then just grew to love it was because I'm Asian. Growing up on Disney Channel, you didn't see it a lot. We had Brenda Song, you know, but her, and I guess Wendy Wu was kind of the, the main one that we had growing up on Disney Channel. But this show really brought in more of the culture um, of an Asian American family. And I'm not Chinese, I'm Korean, but still just seeing some of that stuff and and seeing someone who looked like you on TV and be a main character where their race wasn't the highlighted point of them. It was just them being them. They fit in with everybody else. I feel like that was just great to see that I wish I had seen as a kid, but I didn't only just relate to Andy. Like, you know, Andy is a lot like me, but not a lot like me. Like she's a little, maybe a tad bit more annoying at times and outgoing, but she's quirky and she, she does art and that's something I did growing up and then I relate to the other characters as well because you know Jonah goes through anxiety and panic attacks and I've had not panic attacks but I do so, you know have some social anxiety and stuff like that and then Buffy's a military kid I was a military kid so I found even as an adult a lot of stuff to relate to with this you know so-called kids show so I'm just glad that something like this exists now whether you agree with everything that it tackled or not it's an important show and there, there's a lot of issues in the world that I feel like need to, to be covered. So I am glad a show like this exists and that you know kids are a little bit more educated these days. Whether they agree with something or not, they can decide for themselves as they watch these things play out. <sighs> but now I'm getting a little bit choked up as I, I sit here and, and just say thank you to this show. So it's time for me to stop rambling and for you guys to hit me up on my social media or in the comments below and just let me know your thoughts on this series finale and the show in general were you happy with how the show wrapped up was uh there something you wish would have changed or would have happened how has this show actually impacted your life i know there are a lot of people who have stories about how this show has helped them and i love hearing those stories Ooh. and also if there was an Annie Mac reunion, maybe 10 to 15 years, what do you think would happen with those characters? And is that something you would love to see, you guys? I want you to sound off and let me know, but I also just want to take a second to say thank you to anybody who's ever watched one of these recap videos or any of my videos. Thank you for letting me ramble about this show. 
to you. And hopefully we will meet again in another video if I talk about any other shows you like or if you have any suggestions of shows that maybe I should start doing videos on. I do also know I'm behind on a lot of shows that I have covered previously like Good Trouble and Shadowhunters and uh, The Perfectionists and all of that. I am trying to still catch up with that as you can see my studio is still a mess trying to fix that. But for now, guys, I just want to say thank you. And you can check out more of my videos somewhere over here. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, and I am Lisa. I'm officially signing off from my rambling about Andy Mac. It's a bittersweet day. But thank you guys again.